all those things. Um, I'll read the verses from uh, Philippians chapter 2. Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed, but he emptied himself by taking the nature of a servant when he was born in human likeness and his appearance was like that of any other man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Uh, there's some other words in Scripture that describe him as being one who is gentle, literally, who had this gentle and humble acceptance. And, and boy, did he ever. I mean, it was his father's plan to give up heaven, to give up that glory and to go through everything that he, he did in this world, and he lovingly and willingly took that on. Or to, to go through everything that we did for 30 long years. It must have seemed like an eternity uh, to him. And, and yet again, um, he was accepting of all that perfectly. He, he never questioned his father's will, even when he was being tempted, going 40 days without anything to eat. And then even becoming the, the worst sinner of, of all and feeling that and going through that on the cross. Uh, again, he resolutely took that on because he knew the prize that was waiting for him, uh, our souls, um, our glory, uh, along with his own. Uh, so, you know, that, that perfect and humble acceptance, which then led God to exalt him over all things, is finally what allows us to have the same humble acceptance by virtue of being his children, by virtue of having his holy image, like we talked about on Sunday, uh, put into us. Uh, so that when it comes to um, uh, difficult things that uh, aren't going to, to, to be the same, um, uh, changes in um, how we go about our ministry, um, having to maybe go more after people or to not grow like we, we once did, that, you know, this is God's will. Uh, this is the way that he has allowed evil sometimes to work out, but also for his good uh, in our trusting, our accepting, our following through in his ways uh, to, to, to carry the day in whatever ways he will. Or, or sometimes if uh, maybe a, a decision doesn't necessarily go our way, uh, for us to realize that it's the good of all that he has in mind, uh, especially that good of our being humble and accepting of something that may not seem right or, or sensible to us in having him, again, work that out for everybody involved and for us to come together uh, in that way. And, and finally, I guess, uh, uh, whether it's personal or uh, uh, as a church body, uh, for us to allow the, the difficult changes to go on in our lives, knowing that uh, he's a part of it, uh, that he's ruling over all things, uh, that eventually uh, the hardships that we go through here in this world allow us to uh, see that prize of glory that waits for us, to, uh, again, uh, have that conclusion, that humble acceptance that this isn't what it's all about. It's finally what, uh, uh, what, what lies ahead of us in heaven. So, so we pray. Lord, as again we, we meet in your name, uh, help us to stay focused not only on uh, the earthly things that we, we certainly have to deal with and use as a part of the, the ministry that goes on here, but, but also especially the, the spiritual mindedness, that, that hidden life that you have given us in you, that uh, you are a part of all things, and in everything that we do, we're, we're doing it for you. And finally, in the end, in the way that it works out, in the way that you will work it out uh, in uh, the discussions that are carried out, in the decisions that are made, or finally in the way that, that you may work things out in the end that we may not have any idea of, uh, that we can be trusting and accepting of those things, uh, knowing that you will lead us to go about it in a godly way, and that in the end all things will work out for our good and for your glory. Uh, bless us with that confidence and that peace as we meet in your name tonight. Amen. Okay, I don't really have anything for uh, opening comments to make at this point, so uh, I'd like to ask uh, Pastor Olson to come forward and give the worship elder re report.
Uh, the worship uh, report is right there. Just to note, uh, we have a new hymnal now that we've been using for about nine months. Uh, we're, uh, I'll be meeting with Jim Curtis here this week, and we're going to try to start identifying um, some hymns we want to try to learn. So what you'll probably start noticing is there'll be a month where maybe we'll have one hymn that maybe we'll have a vocalist sing one week, and then maybe the next week the congregation will sing, and, and so that we can start to learn some of those um, newer hymns, um, but then still also using some of the old ones. So um, so we're continuing to try to find a way to introduce the, the new hymnal. I think we've used all the liturgy now I think um, I think we've we've learned um, a lot of the parts that we're going to be using. So I think the lit- liturgy part I think we're pretty caught up on. You probably noticed some of the psalms. That's a big change from what was in the old hymnal. Um, so we've got a lot of opportunity for a variety there. So um, but we'll we'll start to kind of maybe prioritize some different uh, hymns that we can we can try to focus on. Uh, the new organ is has been installed. I think it's fully adjusted now, so we're having our organ uh, dedication um, on August 21st. So during the worship service, we're going to have the organ dedication um, at 9 a.m., and then we're going to have like a picnic, and then at 1 o'clock, we've got an organ recital. Uh, that'll be by Professor Nolte. Um, he'll be the one playing for that. So, uh, so it should be a, a fun opportunity for us to praise God for that gift of a new organ. Um, and then Jim Elder, or Jim Curtis, has decided um, his abilities lay more in the realm of planning worship and and directing choir Um, but as far as being the worship elder he didn't feel that it was a good fit for him so so he's asked if he could continue serving in the capacity of planning worship and and running the choir but not being in the the elder on the council anymore so so he stepped down as elder on council and uh, we'll be uh, looking for a replacement here so um, but we certainly thank Jim for his work and, and like we said he's still very involved in the in a lot of the planning of worship and those kinds of things he had been doing. So, any questions on worship? All right. I see that Bob is here. Would you like to come forward and give your report? Uh, you'll see my report in the uh, handout there. Uh, reviewing what went on last quarter, uh, we continue with the greeting card ministry for shut-ins and uh, homebound. There are about 37 of them that uh, we are serving in that capacity, sending them greeting cards at various times, birthdays and, and holidays and that sort of thing. Uh, we did fellowship and refreshments between services or after service on Easter confirmation and the seminary on Sunday. Uh, we provided meals for a member in need, I think 15 in April and four or five in July, and we just been notified that we could use a few more meals there. Uh, so those of you who have provided meals, if you're interested in doing it again, uh, check in with the website. Uh, I will probably send out a reminder email And if you haven't provided meals and you're interested in doing that, I think we're going to do about two a week. Um, Then see me and then we'll get you signed up uh, with a website there. And it's pretty easy uh, to to pick a time and and then follow through with a meal. Uh, We assisted the stewardship uh, group with a light lunch for their financial presentation on May 23rd. Women's ministry continues to be pretty active. Their Bible study continued through May. Uh, The Fill the Bottle fundraiser for the Pregnancy Center New Beginnings raised $450 and a couple cents. Uh, Using Thrivent grant dollars, they have a little library book exchange. There's an error there. It's not for Pillars Entrance. It's the Hope Center Entrance, and it's out here on the north, uh, southwest corner of the building uh, on Lawrence Street. Uh, Also using grant dollars, they provided improvements to the Hope Center uh, reception area with new chairs, a decorative rug, and a book stand. Uh, Women of the congregation held a garden party on July 13th. There were 26 in attendance. The LWMS International Convention was held in Rochester, New York. Cheryl Hagen, Becky Becky Youngworth, and Janet Meyer attended. And... uh, Becky continues as the international treasurer for LWMS. And then there was a women's ministry conference held at uh, Luther Prep, and Janet Meyer and Julie Zimmer attended. As we look ahead, <clears throat> women's ministry will meet in August for planning. They're looking at a possible speaker event, and uh, Advent by Candlelight is set for December 3rd. 
A page of prayers is going to be inserted in the front of the new hymnals. Uh, and so watch for a work day so that uh, those can be, once they're printed, can be inserted into the new hymnals. Uh, member care will be working with pastors and stewardship to make contracts, contacts with missing and newer church members to get them better connected to the congregation. You'll hear more about that in the future. And then the church picnic was mentioned on August 21st at 11 o'clock in conjunction with the New Oregon dedication. Uh, please sign up. Uh, we're looking for a head count and it helps so much if we have an idea of how many we can plan for. So the, sh the sheets are around. Uh, sign up, uh, indicate if you can help and if you can bring food. Uh, and again, thanks to the many volunteers, all of these things happen because of willing members uh, who are willing to share their time and talents so that we can, uh, through fellowship, love, care, and encouragement for our members, we work together to carry out the mission here at St. Matthew. Any questions? Leanne's been involved, yeah, and I think we'll continue through that. She's usually got some helpers, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, next up is discipleship. John, would you like to step up here? Evening. Well, it's not like me to have a shirt that says Honda on it. It usually says Harley Davidson, so I feel a little awkward with a shirt on. <laughs> All right, just kidding. Uh, life groups. We just finished up in end of May with five life groups, three of them meeting on Thursday evenings, one Tuesday afternoon and one Wednesday evening. And, and again, it, the participation has been great. And if you talk to a lot of the folks that are in life groups, they, I think you hear a lot of positive comments. This summer, we've been meeting a little sporadically. Some, uh, one of our group got together last Tuesday at the Timber Rattlers game. And we're starting to see things uh, happen beyond just a meeting at life groups. Uh, groups are getting together to do other things. So, so it, this is really a, uh, a real tool for fellowship for all of us. So I strongly, cons uh, I, I don't know what the word would be. Uh, we'd like to see more people give life groups a try. And we're hoping that we can add another group in possibly September or maybe uh, January of 23. So. So it's been, it's been all good, yeah. Um, Connections Committee, as Bob uh, Parsons was saying, uh, Pastor Kuski, Bob, and I are gonna be getting together, I think Thursday for a little while, just to get our format together as far as contacting people, what we're gonna say, we got kind of a, a little bit of a presentation. Basically, just to say hello, hi, we miss you, we'd like to see you come back to church services, and is there anything we can do for you? So, I'd, but there's been some folks that their, their names are on our list that maybe we haven't seen for a long time. So we'd like to get in contact with those folks and uh, say hello and take it from there. Stewardship, I think you all know that Pastor Milky has been making, been making a presentation in front of the church congregation about every quarter just to give us an update on what our stewardship emphasis is at the time, what we're gonna be doing in the future, and also at the same time, you know, looking at topics and initiatives that we'll be having for the next few months. And at the same time, every quarter, uh, Rick Kennedy and Treasury has been putting out a quarterly statement, kind of gives us a snapshot of how we're sitting that quarter as compared to last year. A Couple things that we had in May, Pastor Milky conducted a class on estate planning, which was downstairs. And we had about 20 church members that attended that, so we had a pretty good showing on that. A week later, we had a financial planning trivia slash seminar that was uh, uh, attended by about 22 church members. Again, I think we're probably gonna repeat this next year again. So we had some good attendance, a lot of questions, and a lot of positive feedback. Forward-looking vision, 
this September, next month, we're putting together a little package through stewardship for putting emphasis on volunteering and what areas that people can, if there's, they have interest in, they might be able to circle something and, and see that uh, if someone, for instance, is looking at maybe helping out in yard care or in ushering, that uh, there'll be a little package we're putting together so people can put in, uh, circle their areas of interest. In October, Pastor Milky is going to be putting together three weekends in a row right at the end of church service to put an emphasis on stewardship training and what stewardship is all about and how you can be involved in stewardship as a Christian. We'll be putting out more information on that uh, during September. So, Any comments or questions? Yeah. Just a, a comment. Yeah, that's a good point. That was uh, put together by the stewardship committee. A lot of good hard work from a few folks that put that together. And uh, yeah, that's really a helpful tool. Anything else? Ken. Next is outreach. If uh, Ben would like to step up and give us a little bit on that. So there's not a ton uh, for outreach since the last thing. I think Easter, which hadn't happened when I gave the report last time, or when I wrote the report last time, but did happen before the last meeting, we had a Easter egg hunt thing that we did. Uh, that went well. And then we just finished up VBS, and then this last Sunday had ice cream social and the kids singing. Not a lot else to report. Uh, I was on my honeymoon, so I was told I didn't need to make a report during this time, so that's why there's no written report. So, anyone have any questions? All right. Uh, that doesn't cut it, Ben. I've been on a honeymoon for almost 40 years now. <laughs> Um, Vic, yeah, Vic is not here tonight, I, I don't believe. Um, he's probably out of town yet, and uh, if you saw the um, uh, bulletin from the weekend, he, his brother passed away, so I don't expect to see him here for a while. Um, don't have a whole lot to say uh, about property in the last quarter. Uh, we have uh, had some windows that need replacing over at the upstairs apartment in the duplex. Um, that'll be done in the near future. Um, other than that, uh, what? Oh yeah, we had this, a sewer line plug over by the uh, pillars bathrooms that uh, you may have noticed the odor coming from that uh, at uh, one Sunday. Um, that uh, hopefully will be uh, not happen again. Uh, Problem was people were flushing foreign objects down the toilets, like diapers from the Hope Center and um, uh, sharps from the uh, the pillars bathrooms. So uh, there was a lot of junk in there that was causing the the uh, clog that shouldn't have been in the line in the first place. But uh, the pipe did need replacing anyway. It had worn out just like the pipe down uh, in the basement of the church a couple years ago did. So. Uh, we, we would have had to do that eventually anyway, so it kind of alerted us to that problem, but it was a little bit of a nasty situation for a while. Um, that's about all I think we can I can add for uh, property, and I'll give it over to Rick then for the financial report.
and I have to rely on my AV assistant here. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, treasurer's report for the second quarter. I guess I'll face this, face this one so I can advance this, maybe. What am I not doing right, Pastor? Got to be plugged in. Two areas I guess we'll take a look at. Um, first, the operation, what I'm calling the kind of the operational financial summary, and, and that's about our facilities, about our, our income and our expenses. And then the, the second part of it is about giving and gifts. And they kind of two different things when you, when you take a look at them. So we'll kind of focus on those two different areas. Uh, first, I guess, to the operational finance summary. Um, this is, again, our day-to-day -day business, our income and expenses. Um, in your handout there is this report here, and we'll kind of zoom in on a couple of areas. The top area there just kind of highlights some of the things that are, are going on and, and uh, that we want to report on. I guess the one I want to point out in this, this bunch here is the church now has an investment account. I don't know if everybody knows that or not. It would be a, a very similar account to what the... Uh, a uh, foundation is using a balanced account with through wells. We have everything set up, but we haven't put any money into it yet, and it's probably a good thing at this point. So we're kind of in a bit of a holding pattern yet today with the way the markets and things are, but it has been set up and it's set to go. Um, when we look at our balances, uh, there's the balances of our, our, our uh, savings account. Um, Balances of our uh, main checking account. We also have another small petty cash account and then also the foundation ending second quarter. Pat, I think I've got that number right. I hope so. Um, and they'll be reporting on that more um, after I, I get done actually here. When we look at the income side of things, um, first to take a look at the church contributions. Um, and again, we're looking from actually from January all the way to June here. We had actually budgeted 233,000, and we are actually right now at about 240,000, which is kind of a, a positive thing, a positive place to be. So um, that's actually going quite well, although it does come with some some caution and and a bit of an explanation as well, and I'll share that in a minute. Overall income, and that includes some of the other income sources that we have through pillars and some other uh, rental of the gym or the apartments, those types of things. And when we add those in and we look at the overall income, um, you'll see it's at 248 budgeted, and we actually came in at 265, although I am going to throw a correction in there. That uh, number is actually off by like $5,400. We found a bit of a boo-boo. Um, so that number is inflated a little bit um, in the, the um, overall income for um, actually the month of June. We, uh, we kind of came across something last minute here, but the reports were already done. So I'm just pointing it out to you. On the expense side of things, um, again, January um, to current or to the end of the June, we had budgeted 246 and we are at 250. Over our spending, 
for expenses. Along with payroll that have, have caused that number to go up. 